Hey guys, welcome to the UCSD Winter Games Fest Finals, and this match is going to be between David Kim and Cora. We have Cora starting at the 6 o'clock position as the Tan Protoss. We have David Kim, aka Jayun, as the Orange Zerg at the 12 o'clock position. Both these guys are very, very good players. Uh, David Kim, actually, people were calling him essentially the A-Zerg Korean guy for most of the day, with the scary APM, essentially, and people were just really in awe of his skills. Really good micro-control. I would say his style was mostly with the two hatchery breaks on fast expansions against Protoss players. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately for Korra, he's uh, more of a two-gate player, but a lot of the maps here, like Medusa and Andromeda, really demand fast expansion builds. And Korra, not very familiar with the fast expansion build, a lot more comfortable with just the two-gate build. He was practicing the fast expansion build a little bit with Cirrus ahead of time, but that's really one of those things you want to practice uh, more in depth. Although I do think an advantage Korra has is I think his mid to late game macro is somewhat better. Uh, so on a map like this, I think he can still go two gate and pull out a pretty good victory against and then just hope to survive, I guess, maybe Andromeda, maybe take Andromeda or Medusa, one of the two of the other matches. And then the, uh, I think Requiem was the other matchup, the other map uh, that was out there. So he can do pretty well on that. And then I'm trying to remember what the fifth map was, um, or if there was a fifth map uh, going. So all five maps would have been played uh, in this setup. Anyway, it looks like a quick scout out there, that uh, drone not finding anything at the 9 o'clock position. Overlord also not finding anything at the 3 o'clock position. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, not a very good map position for a 2-gate build, and we are going to see a forge go down for Korra. So Korra going to go for a forge rather than the 2-gate initial opening. And again, he's not very familiar with this build, so his timings might be a little bit off. This isn't something he's practiced extensively. We're seeing a quick gas and a spawning pool on the opposite end from uh, Jayun, and it looks like he is, uh, he can either go quick lair, looks like that was off an over pool, so I assume this is just going to be for quick lair rather than for uh, zergling run buys. Uh, I expect again, just kind of more of the same as two hatcheries into some sort of break, especially against the fast expansion build, and we'll see if Korra, it looks like uh, He's got that drone coming back around to put down those two cannons. He needs to. That was one of the problems in his practices against Cirrus, actually, is you get those cannons down a little bit late or not at all. Uh, so it looks like he is going to put down both cannons rather than any sort of delay cannon nexus thing. Play a little bit safer here. Unfortunately, um, again, he's not familiar with this build, and he's not seeing that the drones are being built before the spawning pool, so he's not going to end up with any early zergling pressure. So those two cannons a little bit lost here. Again, no Zerglings being produced at this stage. Uh, it looks like actually just that probe being harassed a little bit by those by those drones. And we'll see if that drone in the backfield for David Kim decides to go for that gas. That sometimes can throw off uh, Protoss players as well. And it looks like, nope, he's not going to actually go for that gas alongside. So Korra, it looks like he's got 100 resources. Usually you want to put down a pylon uh, before putting down your Nexus at this stage just because you end up supply cap sometimes. But it looks like he's going to put down that Nexus instead. And you can just see that his timing's a little bit off here and there. Second hatchery now down for David Kim, and I expect again more of the same from him, from Jayun, just to go for those two hatchery breaks uh, and I expect him to be successful with that, and a gateway now going down on that front door as well. So we'll see how Korra can play against this, getting that cannon down in the backfield. Uh, again, still supply capped, hasn't put down that pylon down uh, looks like he's just going to rely on this Nexus to go up. Looks like now actually he's getting that pylon down, but uh, just a little bit off. And there's that again, that quick layer from Jayun. So getting a really quick hop on that uh, on that layer tech. And honestly, what he's seeing in the backfield, he's seeing that gas coming down a little bit uh, late. And I think uh, with this drone in the backfield, he's going to have a pretty good scout at what's going on with Korra. And I think he's got to have a pretty good impression that Korra not very familiar with this fast expansion build. Looks like that gas going in the backfield, getting that cybernetic score down uh, now. The question is, is will he be able to, will Korra be able to, it looks like he's still got that uh, drone spotting in the backfield. Uh, gotta assume that's not going to be Hydralis Den, because it looks like that layer more than halfway finished. We haven't seen a Hydralis Den down yet. And again, it looks like it's going to be more of a two hatchery build rather than uh, a three hatchery build. Probably going to put down that Spire down momentarily, and Korra really needs to get some cannons on the backfield. Doesn't look like he has any cannons, really uh, an additional pylon to put cannons in position at a secondary. Uh, cybernetics core down, and he really needs to get those cannons out sooner rather than later here to deal with this pylon kind of out at the uh, an odd position, and this drone is seeing exactly what it wants to see. No additional cans in the backfield. Uh, a little bit of delay on that uh, Stargate. He's probably got the Spire, yeah, going down at the secondary. Korra not going to see it, and again, Korra not very familiar with that build. He has that Zealot running around trying to take care of that drone inside of his base, but not putting down cannons or uh, any sort of protecting uh, protection against these Mutalisks in the backfield, so he's going to be very, very exposed to this. 
really at the latest you you would want the cannons down would be right about now so he's going to have not even a corsair out to really deal with this uh, against this two hatchery build here creep colony going down in the front door just in case uh, some loose sellouts managed to push down on that front uh, but yeah just two cannons at the secondary which aren't uh, it looks like one is almost protecting that that probe line but not really uh, stargate uh, about two-thirds finished but that stargate's going to be finished about the same time that spire's finished and fortunately there's not going to be any sort of anti-air to speak of and there's that citadel of a dune going down as well so against this two hatchery build so Cora, I, I think he was assuming one nerves is what i think was happening here but additionally i think he was assuming he was going to go up against a typical uh, three hatchery build uh, in which case he'd be okay right here unfortunately not going up against the three hatchery build which again wasn't really uh, JM style. It was more for those two hatchery breaks. It looks like he's producing the uh, mutilisks now. We're getting a pylon down in the backfield. I don't see any cannons down to really defend. So this this is going to be a complete breach. There's that weapons one being developed now, uh, and yeah, that probe scouting the upper left hand corner just to see if there's a hatchery there. Fortunately, not going to find anything there, and he's going to end up in big trouble. All sorts of mutilisks being produced, and a hydralis then to kind of follow this up with a lurker contain. Uh, but yeah, I've got to assume David Kim, especially with this Overlord up position, has got to feel very confident with this attack. Single uh, Corsair produced, but that's not going to be enough to fight this off. Uh, Overlord taken out, but that's not going to hurt Jane too much. Another gateway being put down. Corsair pushing out, but not going to be enough to stop these Mutalisks that are now approaching his base. And now these Mutalisks are going to be able to get their, their just reward here. All sorts of probe kills. Another pylon going down. And again, Corsair has nothing to stop this. Uh, to, like, Temple Archives just warping in in the background, but it's just not in time to stop him. Uh, he does have two cannons back here, but again, the cannons do not protect that Nexus line. He's also got a single Dragoon, but that Dragoon could very easily be taken out. Looks like uh, Jane now going to switch into microing a little bit. These probes kind of uh, looks like actually going back and forth. Another Corsair has been produced, but again, it's not going to be enough to deal with these Mutalisks, uh, and this is going to give plenty of time to either put down additional expansion or get uh, or just pump things up. Looks like another sunken colony going down, just in case there's a suicide attack. There's, it looks like, Lurker Techs being upgraded. Still off two hatcheries. A uh, couple Scourge produced to kind of escort, and i ah, stopping the gas as well, to escort that away. And again, I think this is more of an artifact of uh, Core's unfamiliarity, unfamiliarity with the fast expansion build. Uh, Corsair's pushing out once again, uh, almost getting taken out there, but getting ushered away. Still trying to engage. One Corsair taken out. There is a second Corsair out. Uh, and if they can micro, if they can just get back and gather together, maybe lead them uh, over that cannon line, the two might be enough. It looks like he's still going to wait for that third one. But at the very least, you can see the 35 supply versus 41 supply on the opposite end. Uh, it just it, it hurts a lot. And there's honestly only two cannons up on that secondary with just kind of a measly task force. Otherwise, this pylon probably going to get taken down as well. So things not looking well for Korra at all. He's still got that cor both Corsairs taken out, still trying to do what he can to micro this. Uh, both gateways unpowered, not able to get the Dragoons up. And it looks like these Mulesks are actually just going to be proud of what they've done and come back uh, again for that front door break. More Hydralis being produced alongside. And it looks like, uh, it looks like yeah... Lurker tech almost finished, so probably going to morph to lurkers in just a moment. And Korra does not even have enough to stop the attack forces on the ground. He's got three zealots. It looks like he might be able to get two more dragoons out once this this pylon gets back up, but otherwise just some Corsairs up in the ground. Able to establish some cannons just way too late, and it looks like he's going to get these probes harassed uh, over the secondary as well. So and it looks like also David Kim, he's got these, uh, this drone here in the upper left-hand base. He's going to try to take that as well. Corsair is moving back up to try to do as much damage as possible. It's just not going to be enough. Uh, lurkers morphing right outside the base. Five Lurkers going to be able to press down on the secondary. Uh, uh, Sidestorm nowhere close to finished. So it's just three Zealots and two Cannons versus five Lurkers. Uh, some Zerglings and also some Mutalisks that are going to be pressing down momentarily on the front door. David Kim in a very, very strong position here, and honestly nothing nothing happening for Korra. Uh, and again, I've got to feel like this is just Korra's unfamiliarity with this build. I think he would have been better off sticking with the 2K, even at the crossed position right here, producing some Dark Templar to try to uh, produce some degree of a counter. There is no, It looks like there's still an Overlord actually over that secondary, so it's not going to be enough. And this is just too much. Those cannons going to be taken out by those Zerglings everything else. Looks like the Mutalisks also going to be taken out, uh, but it's it's just not going to be enough. Uh, the lurkers burrowing all over that secondary. At least there's some detection, but that's going to be it for Cora. Cora ends up losing game one. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, thank you for listening.